Hi, it's Thursday, May the 25th, and I continue to read and wonder my way through Mark's Gospel. And today we're going to finish up chapter 2. It's Mark chapter 2, verses 23 to 28. Again, just a little uh, snapshot. That's pretty much what, 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 what chapter 1 and 2 has been, like a, like a photo album. And we just get these little snapshots, um, little bits of just a little picture, um, in, in uh, as Mark describes uh, Jesus' ministry. Um, yesterday, our little snapshot was... Uh, um, uh, people asking Jesus why his disciples aren't fasting. Pharisees are fasting. John's disciples are fasting. Why aren't they fasting? And Jesus went, well, because I'm here. <laughs> uh, I wondered about, you know, about, about fasting as a way to be more aware of God's presence, to, to, to connect to the word of God, the will of God, the presence of God. And it makes sense. Jesus going, well, I am here. I am present. They don't need to fast. When I'm gone, sure, but I'm here right now. Um, and then then we go on to this. And I think there's some similarities. Well, you, we'll see as we look at this little picture. So here it is. It's Mark 2, 23 to 28. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields. And as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was the high priest and ate the, the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave some to his companions. And then he said to, him, said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. So, so there we go. Um, well, as I wonder, I, I guess I tend to wonder in order. Um, the disciples going through plucking heads of grain. I don't think they're just aimlessly doing it and throwing it. I, I think that they're they're eating. It's it's it, it's gleaning actually, and it's perfectly legal. It's the thing you do. Uh, you can go through uh, and 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 take some of the remaining grain. Um, that's what they're doing, and the problem is they're doing it on the Sabbath, and so that's work. They're working on the Sabbath. You can't work on the Sabbath. That's the rule. Everybody knows that, and uh, and they get quite touchy about that. Um, and the Pharisees point that out. Why are they doing what's not lawful on the Sabbath? I mean, to this day, um, uh, Orthodox Jews, observant Jews, I mean, they're very careful about what you can and cannot do on the Sabbath. Um, I have friends, uh, used to have a, a dear friend uh, who, who's a You don't answer the phone. You don't, you don't do any manual labor. Uh, if you've been to, um, uh, a Jewish hospital, you know, they'll have a Sabbath elevator. Uh, cause if you got to get to the 16th floor, you get there, but you don't have to push any buttons. It stops at every floor. You just get on, it stops and opens the doors at every floor. So you don't have to do the work. And for people who, for whom that's not a tradition, goes like, oh, that's just goofy. But the whole point of, of, of uh, the whole point for, for, for many of these folk uh, in observing the Sabbath is honoring God. So, so I, 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 I don't take an elevator or I do, I take a Sabbath elevator that stops at every floor. Um, I don't turn on a light switch, by the way. Um, I don't do all these things I don't do because I want to honor God. I will inconvenience myself, um, even make things difficult. I famously know stories of, of you know, uh, Orthodox Jewish uh, businessmen, in particular businessmen, um, who, you know, if the deal isn't done uh, on Friday before the sun goes down, they leave. And say, well, maybe we'll do it next week. Yeah, but you'll lose the deal. Doesn't matter. Sabbath is more important. Uh, and so uh, I know businesses have been run that way. Um, so Sabbath is is a way of honoring your commitment to God, showing to God that there are things more important than than your comfort, than your convenience. So yes, it's a little difficult, but. That reminds me that I'm in relationship with God. That reminds me how important God is. That shows God that I care. Right? I mean, it's kind of like saying I love you to God. 
Right? We, lots of us are in relationships and we never say that anymore. Um, because, well, you know I love you, right? And it'd, it'd be nice to hear it once in a while. For many, Sabbath is a way of just saying I love you to God. Just to say I love you. I am not doing any work. And here are all the lists of the things that I'm not doing that I would normally do on the other days of the week, but not on the Sabbath. So that's how some people see the Sabbath. Um, the Pharisees, I can't read their hearts and minds, but I suggest that some of them, absolutely, that was it. Same idea. Um, this is how we show God that we are faithful. So, Jesus' disciples um, are being unfaithful. They are uh, being rude to God. They're not saying, I love you, when everybody else is. They're missing that opportunity. Um, they're hurting God's feelings. I know I'm making it simplistic, but when you get right down to it, I mean, I, you know, does God care whether you're plucking grains or not? Probably not. Um, so I don't think God's feelings are hurt, but that's how we treat it. So Jesus first um, challenges their, their legalism, saying, okay, so you've got rules. To be a Jew, you follow all these rules. I got it. But remember David... <laughs> And they all remember David. They're big fans of David. Um, have you ever read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? They entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest, and they ate the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he gave, and he gave some to his companions. So the bread of presence, show bread, um, yeah, was not meant to be touched by anyone but the priest. It is, it is holy. David and his and his his soldiers, David and his men were uh, were desperate. They were hungry. They were fleeing. They took refuge and they took food. So David took that food that you're not supposed to touch. David ate that food and shared it with his companions. And they're not supposed to do that. But we don't hold that against David. Frankly, of all the things we'd hold against David, that would be one of the least that we hold against David. Uh, but the fact is, we focus on how God loved David and David loved God and that relationship and all the things that David does wrong, uh, all the things that are sinful, all the things that are painful, all the things that, 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 uh, that hurt people around him. Um, that's all let go because we're focusing on that relationship with God. So, you know, here it is. David said, yeah, there's a higher priority. And I think that's what Jesus is talking about here. There's a higher priority here. People are starving. Okay? Whether they're actually starving or not, they are in need. So answering people's needs is more important than not touching the showbread, the bread of presence. Um, Jesus' disciples, I assume, are hungry. Uh, so feeding them is more important than sticking to a ritual routine that at best has come to be a sign of respect to God. Jesus is saying, I don't need that as respect. Um, and, and that is actually pretty much what he says at the second time. Uh, when he says the Sabbath was, not made, was, was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. Uh, so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Jesus is saying, I'm in charge of the Sabbath and I'm not offended by this. So it's not for you to be offended by. Um, but going back to the earlier piece, Jesus suggests that there are priorities. Jesus isn't saying the Sabbath isn't a good idea. Jesus isn't saying we should never observe the Sabbath. Um, same as Jesus wasn't saying that fasting isn't a good idea. Uh, yesterday, uh, just saying it's not necessary right now. Um, so there are priorities, but when you, when you're an observant Jew, you don't necessarily prioritize them. I, I've, you now I've mentioned it many times before. There are 613 mitzvahs, 613 basic commandments. Um, and I think most of us would say one's more important than the other. I would say thou shalt not kill is more important than not mixing fabrics. Right? Um, but 
the grand scheme of things and God who holds uh, all of the universe, I don't know, maybe they aren't. Um, but Jesus said, yeah, no, but they are. So people should not suffer because they're trying to follow the rules. The Sabbath was made for humankind. If the Sabbath is hurting people, then it's time to lessen its priority. When people are fed, then we go to the Sabbath. Uh, in the Orthodox quarter of, uh, of Jerusalem, um, ambulances don't come in on, on the Sabbath. Uh, I am told reliably that, yes, people who need medical aid, they don't get it on the day, on, on the Sabbath. If, if you have a heart attack on the Sabbath, then you may very well die on the Sabbath. And that is a a statement of faith for them. That's what they do. That's what they believe. Ambulances are not invited into the quarter. Um, so it doesn't happen. Doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. But then again, that's not my faith. But I think that Jesus is, is saying here, similar to what he was saying yesterday. All of these rules, all these mitzvahs are all meant to help us be aware of God's presence, of God's will, to hear God's word, as it were. That, that, that's the whole point. It's, it's this, this awareness of God. Uh, it's not showing God how great you are or showing God how much you honor God. It's about making you aware of God. The Sabbath is made for humankind. Now, he doesn't say the Sabbath wasn't made for God, um, but, but he takes God out of the equation. The Sabbath was made for humankind. So the Sabbath should help us be aware of God's presence. But you can't be aware of God's presence if you're starving. You can't be aware of God's presence if you're dying. You know, um, so I think Jesus is saying, no, no, we already prioritize. So let's be honest about this. Right now, I, if I'm one of the Pharisees, then I, I would have a chat with Jesus. going, OK, so just to be clear, are you saying your disciples are starving or they're just, you know, kind of hungry they could wait until the end of the day or they could have prepared and brought something uh pre-made um you know they you know maybe there's that discussion there but that's not what 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 the pharisees said they just said no what they're doing is unlawful and she's just going whoa, whoa wait a minute first let's talk about priorities then jesus is going back to i think the same thing that he went to yesterday i'm here i am god's presence so they don't need to do anything to be more aware of God's presence. They're with me right now. Um, so all those things, we can lay them aside for the moment. Um, at least that's what it feels like to me. Now, the other thing that I wonder about, and, and you wouldn't wonder about this unless, of course, you've been to seminary uh, or read this kind of stuff a lot, um, <laughs> That the story of David uh, and the uh, the show bread of the bread of presence, uh, it's in Samuel, First Samuel, um, around I don't know chapters twenty, twenty one, twenty two, somewhere in there. Uh, anyway, um, it says so. He says right here uh, he entered the house of God when Abiathar was the high priest, and I know in fact that in First Samuel it says that Ahimelech was the high priest. That's Abiathar's father. Um, and so that bothers some people. Uh, is Jesus got the scripture wrong? Um, and all sorts of people go, well, well, no, but uh, Ahiah Lamech and his son Abiathar, they were, they were high priests together at the same time. Really? Interesting. I didn't know that. Never says that. Uh, it says, well, maybe we just called all the priests Abiathar. <laughs> Um, it's, <clears throat> it's confusing, um, uh, because it doesn't fit. It's like, oh, there's a mistake. And we look at that and go, yeah, I guess that's a mistake, but it's really not what this is about. This is not about the succession of high priests, right? This is about the time that David and his people did a thing they weren't supposed to do, <laughs> Um, to whoever was in charge doesn't really matter. It also doesn't matter that we don't need the, need the names of David's companions who also got to eat the bread. Like that, it's not important. Uh, and, and most people go, well, yeah, I agree. 
Um, so we, we're, we're happy to let that go. I find that amusing when, when there are other times that people will take a single line of scripture and say, there you go, this line is everything. And if you do not observe that, then you're out. Whether they taking a line about uh, women leading in church or they're taking a line about uh, um, uh, homosexuality or they're taking a line about shellfish uh, and not being able to, like whatever the thing is, it's it's interesting to be something that will take one line and go, no, we absolutely have to drill down on that one and we're sticking to it. This one's like, well, yeah, so maybe Jesus got it wrong, but that's not what's really important. <laughs> By the way, I agree. That's not what's really important. Uh, what's really important is what is at the heart of that. And I remind myself that every time we start to get into little scripture arguments and people will bring up one line. Uh, this is, well, it says one thing says this. It's like, yeah, and maybe they were wrong like Jesus was. Or maybe Jesus wasn't wrong and other historians are wrong. Or maybe it doesn't matter. What's at the heart of it? So... What I get from this passage is at the heart of all of this is that God loves us. The Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. Sabbath is a gift to us. God wants us to be aware of God's presence. God wants us to, God wants us to, to, to love God wants us to be in relationship with God and be aware of it and have a dynamic, fulfilling relationship. So for me, all those little passages that people will pull out here and there, if they are not providing a dynamic, loving relationship with God, if they are not to the benefit of humanity that God created, then I think they may, we may be missing the point. Uh, anyway, that's about to turn into a sermon. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to, it's a short meditation today going to leave it there and uh, leave it with you to think about uh, the Sabbath being made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. What does that mean to you? And uh, what else is in here that's worth wondering about? Probably something that I've missed. Anyway, let me offer a prayer. Loving God, thank you. Thank you for the gift of wonder. Thank you for the opportunity to wonder unafraid knowing that we can be wrong and we are still loved. We can quote scripture inaccurately or have our history wrong and we can still be at one with you. God, we ask that we remember always, always, that you love us. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that is enough for me today, but I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Uh, and we'll start chapter three and see what happens. Um, until I get to see you, God bless you. Please know that God sees you and God loves you exactly as you are. Uh, and that God's love moves through you into the world. Life was meant for you. Um, God loves you. God loves us all. And we need to remember that always. It changes everything when you're aware of that, you know. Anyway, until I see you, God bless.